Coming to you from high atop a carved monument, looking out over all of America and the world, it's the Mount Rushmore Podcast. We are Jeff and Richard. Hello. And Michael. Howdy. And we are proud to be a top four ranking podcast. And I don't mean that from a popularity standpoint. I mean, we are a podcast where we rank the top four of any given topic. And on this episode, the topic is the Mount Rushmore of failed civilizations. Richard's topic. Why was it chosen, Richard? Um, I think I was watching some History Channel. And there is just so there. That seems to be a lot of the topics. Hmm. There's a lot. If, they're, if they're not doing Hitler, mm-hmm. yeah, good chance we're talking about failed civilizations. Failed civilizations. Well, cool. This is uh, a fun topic, and I think we can just jump right in. Uh, Richard chooses the topic. Michael starts. What do you got, Michael? Okay, uh, my first choice. In ancient times, hundreds of years before the dawn of history lived a strange race of people. <laughs> no one knew who they were. The Atlanteans. Or what they were doing. No one knew who they were. <laughs> uh, I love the idea of Atlantis yeah. as this... Um, Casino in the Bahamas. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. Home, also in Reno. Home, in Reno, okay. home of Aquaman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Home of the Little Mermaid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> home of Namor the Submariner. <laughs> uh, the idea... I like that it has these two parts to it. One, it has like the history in um, writings of Plato as the epitome of this failed civilization oh. that has too much hubris mm-hmm. and falls to Rome and the Republic and the strength of the Republic is what saves them. And this island kingdom of kings that think they're all powerful will fall to Rome. Mm-hmm. But then I love that it also got transfigured into history as this mythical thing that no one knows where it is. Yeah, No one knows if it really existed Um, I read something that people try to argue of Plato's writings that, well, if you just kind of interpret it or retranslate it a different way, maybe it actually does exist. Oh, what? But but I don't know. I I like that it possibly exists all over the place. Okay. Uh, Could be in the middle of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Could be in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. Maybe it's up in Antarctica, down in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Um. I think it really just exists inside our own hearts. I think, uh, yeah, I agree with it. When we all believe and examine our hearts and know the truth, that's when an underwater a utopia exists. What? How, how? Where did you find all your research on this, or where, where did it come from? You said Plato. Yeah, and Plato's, Plato's um, talking about Atlantis. He apparently he invented it, the idea of it. Wow! In one of his. Um, one of his writings. I don't know the name of it because I didn't write that down. Is that when his sea monkeys arrived in the mail? <laughs> and he wondered, where did they come from? <laughs> well, I think I know. I mean, <laughs> then, he, then he immediately followed by, wait, the dad's not smoking a pipe. This is a ripoff. <laughs> is a rip-off. What caused Atlantis to fail? Uh, its sense of hubris that it could attack okay. Rome and defeat Rome. Ah, okay. And, uh, you know, I... And being underwater also. Yeah. That didn't help. Poor planning. That, that's one of those things about like Atlantis is that it, it has all these uh, fabled ways in which it went away. Okay. You know, whether it was like tectonic plates that separated and this island nation fell into the yeah. ocean, whether a volcano erupted and sunk it, or whether it never really existed in the first place. Oh. And it's just, uh, you know, mythical. Wow, cool. But I love that this is a thing that has existed for a long time and i'm sure with the ocean being as big as it is sure why not Mm -hmm. maybe there's a sunken city someplace that we just don't know that has sunk so far the civilization of ancient greek romans slash atlanteans yeah and maybe they turned into people. yeah and they don't show up on google earth at all we wouldn't see it i look all the time okay (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but we, when we had the uh, stupid station, I can't believe we're in 2019. It feels it's like we're, nice. it feels like we're recording the week before 2019. Yeah, and it's not, but it's li- it's 2019 right now, everybody. It is. Can you believe that shocking thing that happened? Oh, on God. New Year's Day, Woo! they're still talking about it There's, on the news. It is so shocking that. <laughs> Okay, we'll pause. And guys, we'll just insert the insert, insert whatever, whatever the happens that, that happens. Because something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Man drives van at DeFroyo store. Mm-hmm. I and, can't believe it. And we're back. <laughs> I, and I can't believe that happened. No, it's It was so shocking. It's crazy. That's crazy. My voice even went so high. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's 2019. And like, uh, it, I don't know. The, the idea of Atlantis is more powerful than it being a faux 
made up fade failed yeah. civilization mm-hmm. i think that the idea that something could just fall off the face of the earth that something was this powerhouse and just it's just mm-hmm. gone and i will probably talk about it in later picks but that is always pretty interesting about these more ancient civilizations that are just they're just gone yeah did that did the concept of atlantis presage uh actual archaeology had people been finding old i wonder when when that discovery of of ancient civilizations happened or did people bear witness to things like Pompeii and go, well, they're gone. <laughs> right. If they could be gone, then anyone could or be gone. Or if there's a giant, a biblical type of flood or something like that, people realize, well, beneath this space now was once a great civilization. Yeah. I wonder what, what prompted that mythology or reality. All right, Richard, what do you got? All right. My first one are the people of the Easter Islands. Ooh, hmm. cool. Um, so the Easter Islands are, or Easter Island specifically, is tw- about 2,300 miles west of Chile. Um, and it was actually settled by ancient Polynesians. I didn't really know much about the history of um, Easter Island before I started to do do the research on this. Is this the one with uh, Waponi Wu and the orange drink? No, I'm sorry. No. Joe versus the volcano. That's different, Joe versus the volcano. Different, different Polynesian Close, island. close. Okay. So... This was actually settled by ancient Polynesians. I think that they came around the same time that Hawaii was was settled by the Polynesians as well. If you're if you're an individual in Polynesia, you're just Anesia, right? You're not Poly. Are you just from an island? I think you are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and look, the only thing I knew about the Easter Island were the big heads. Yeah. 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 From from in search of mm-hmm. where did the people get? Where did these come from? And it's like, yeah. well, they came from the people who lived there. Mm-hmm. I guess the mystery about it has always kind of been how did they actually erect them? Mm -hmm. Because these things are like 30 feet tall and weigh like 80 tons. Yeah, sure. And they didn't have wheels. They didn't have pack animals. So the question is how do you not just construct this but actually get these things to stand upright? Mm. Um, So we never quite figured that out. Um, But they had a thriving community there. And then... A whole nature, a whole a whole round of things happened. Mm-hmm. I'm fascinated by how these civilizations go from being thriving to sort of kaput. gone, yeah. kaput. And this has a, just a little bit of everything. Um, you've got um, their own kind of I don't know if you want to call it hubris mm-hmm. or lack of attention to nature, but they've done some uh, scientific analysis and they think that they cut down basically the Easter Islanders had cut down every tree oh. at some point making canoes, making rope, making things like that. And then there were rats there that ate all the trees' seeds. Oh, so wow. they couldn't grow new trees. Mm-hmm. So that was a problem. Um, so they couldn't make rope anymore. They couldn't make canoes. They couldn't go seafaring sea mm-hmm. to go either get hunt or try and look for new land. Mm. Um, then they, So that meant they also had to start burning grass for fuel. Then they run out of grass. Um, so that kind of leads this period of starvation and civil war because you have these two different I guess the Northerners and the Southerners were kind of separate from each other. So you, within this civilization, you had two distinct groups of people. Um, were the Easter Island heads themselves, were they on multiple parts of the island, or are they kind of centralized in one area? I believe they're centralized in one area. Hmm. Um, and then... That's what they call it headquarters. That's what they do call it headquarters. <laughs> um, and then the slave raids came. So we got that going on from Peru. You know, those Peruvian slave ra- oh, wow. raiders are really the worst. Wow, yeah. So they had a population of about 3,000 at that point in the 1870s. Half of them get taken away by slave traders. Jeez. Um, a small group of a few dozen manage to escape and make their way back. And they bring with them the gift that keeps on giving. Oh. Smallpox. Oh. So that pretty much wipes the rest of the population completely out. Yeah. Do you think at that time when there's no food... Uh, and no opportunity to get any food, and people are just kind of eating, you know, dirt. Somebody comes by and s- says, "Hey, we're slave traders. We're here to capture you. That you've already jumped in the boat. Like you don't even like think about." Well, that's also part of it. I mean, it was uh, technically, I think they call it blackbirding, which is, which is sort of capturing, but it's also luring people in with false pretenses oh. like get you know come with us and there's you know plenty to eat and you'll be fed and well taken care of and all this stuff and then psych 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 whoops <laughs> yeah a little bit of a whoopsie <laughs> how do these chains get on you <laughs> uh, i'll row the boat 
you know. <laughs> so I, I, I'm fascinated by Easter Island, obviously, just because of the heads, and that's something that's always kind of stuck with me as a kid. Um, Mostly via Far Side cartoons. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> as I as as I learned most of my history. <laughs> um, but I, I do think that it it does tell the story of many different ways that civilizations collapse it's all in there it's yeah you know lack of preservation it's infighting it's colonization mm-hmm. or takeover by another by another people mm-hmm. it's got a little bit of everything within wow. that story wow well cool hey uh so we're gonna do a little bit different scoring at least this episode i don't know if these guys are gonna fight me on it or not maybe they will uh but the first round is worth one point. Second round worth two points third round worth three points fourth round worth four points and if you in your round choose the suggestion that's in the borglum bag oh it's an actual bag it's an actual bag it's a velvet bag it looks a lot like it looks a lot like a christmas stocking richard (laughs) it looks like suspiciously it's either a christmas stocking or it's one of those things that ebenezer scrooge had on his head (laughs) (laughs) or it could be this an actual (laughs) stocking for a guy with gout or some sort of horrible (laughs) guy diabetes it's a large kerchief (laughs) i purchased it to contain a batman mask but uh it was a cremation urn bag so uh I killed it there. It's, haunt, um, it's haunted, at least. It's haunted, but there is, an, there is my choice of the failed civilization, which is in there. We'll see if you can you guys pick it. Okay, so we've each gone through our first round, and Michael, what's your second choice? Hold on. I'm just updating the spreadsheet, so now I'm going to add little round numbers to each one, and then we can do the proper scoring. Mm. Cool. That's fun. I uh, love when Jeff just drops stuff on us in uh, the middle of the podcast. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you, we can so, go back next episode. Do I move the one here down to number four? I'm going to keep the same order that I have it written. Richard, let's do the same for yeah, now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to game the system this week. Okay. Okay, next week, though. Oh, for Sh- sure. Shake hands on gaming next week? Next yep. week. Um, all right, my second pick. In ancient times, hundreds of years before the dawn of history, <laughs> lived a strange race of people. The Mayans. The Mayans. Also my second pick. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the Mayan uh, empire civilization is lo- it long, like nearly 3,000 years, plus add another 400 years of it kind of waning, waning, dying out, turning into Incan. tribes and just like many pockets of mm-hmm. civilization rather than it being a continuous thing. Yeah. Um, they have huge monuments and roads all wiped out just all gone and all that remains is like this the civilization and the ruins of something that existed that there's not a huge amount of history Mm -hmm. on right or at least you know no one knows how it died out there's uh, an assumption that it was uh famine uh inner Warfare, people moving out of the cities, some sort of climate change, but it all kind of ended right around 900 AD, and it existed for you know 2,900 years before that. 900 AD? I didn't know what that long. Yeah. Wow. From 2000 BC to mm-hmm. about 900 AD. Wow. So they kind of had the run of things, mm-hmm. and then they're just kaput, mm-hmm. which I think is fascinating, especially when um, an environment takes over a city or a civilization. Um, eventually everything just gets kind of wiped up back to the mm-hmm. back to the jungle. Yeah, and it's not even so much that it went kaput, it's just everyone sort of scattered. You know, there are still, you know, millions of people who speak Mayan languages or are descended from them out there today. Yeah. So it's not like the Mayan culture necessarily in, you know, right around 900 AD just ceased. Yeah. It It just they left these huge cities they had built. Mm -hmm. It would be like if suddenly we all decided to get the hell out of Los Angeles and moved scattered out into Uh, what? Silmar. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe even Fontana. Ooh. I heard that to be true about actually indigenous North American cultures too, that people, it is, they are often portrayed as uh, there were blight and famine that uh, impacted the populations of, of native American North American persons before right before the pilgrims got here before other before white people got here there was there was a, a um, impact on their environment and society and all that kind of stuff well you're too. so you're so 
dependent on the environment. Yeah. That if a major drought happens. Yeah. It has the potential to destroy, destroy everything. Mm-hmm. everything, not mm-hmm. just not just agriculture, but you know, impact every part oh, yeah. of culture. Yeah. Okay, educate me. What the Mayans the European conquerors impacted the Mayans, right? Eventually. Okay. Not quite it like it they came over around what, fourteen, fifteen hundred. Right. So it was as Richard was saying, was kind of when they the Mayan people had moved into smaller okay. villages and less out of their established cities with their giant structures. Okay. So they were around, but you know, ult- ultimately everyone got picked off by the yeah. Europeans. Okay. Richard, is there anything else you want to share? Well, I just think that, I mean, for me, it's fascinating because the Mayans were the most advanced of probably all of the pre European mm-hmm. settler mm-hmm. population um, civilization, certainly in the New World, but comparable with any civilization in, in some ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, in terms of the the hieroglyphic writings that they did, their advances in math and uh, astronomy, mm-hmm. and the fact that somehow some that something happened, and we just still don't know. There's the lack of history about what happened with the Mayan people from a group of people who were so advanced. Mm-hmm. You would think that they would also be advanced in the way that they would detail. You know what they forgot? What to happened? Do? They forgot to save it to the cloud. Ooh, <laughs> which is odd. That's what since you got to you got to write it down, and you got to back it up to the cloud. Yeah, because you can't rely on. Which you know, is you odd. They were in the cloud. They were in the clouds. Yeah, you would think oh, yeah. they're in the mountains. Mm-hmm. They're close to the cloud. They could have just backed it straight right. up to the cloud. The, uh, you know, the uh, great library of Alexandria should have backed it up. Should have backed that sucker up. Yep, and now it's gone. Yep. Okay, we are at our halftime, and uh, this is your opportunity as a listener to help us stay a top four ranking podcast, but help us become (laughs) an actual ranking podcast. (laughs) That would be super great. And you can do that by going to uh, the um, Apple iTunes, uh, go and download, or wherever you get podcasts, download rating and review ing current and past episodes. You can do that on Stitcher. You can do that on iHeartRadio. Yep, Spotify. Spotify. Lots of places you can help uh, other people find the Mount Rushmore podcast and help them rank it. You can rank us, and we rank everything else. You can go to your local library and ask to find it there. Yeah. And the librarian will look at you and go, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you are. And and they're pressing a button that's under the counter. You don't know what button they're they're pressing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And next thing you know, two two, uh, large men in in black suits come and lead you away. And you, Lobot from from Empire Strikes Back. You could up. do. You could go to your local record store, and, and do some ranking. <laughs> Another second yeah. wave ska. Yeah, like a second wave ska thing. You could put on your uh, specialist, aka mm-hmm. uh, checkered bands. You could wear. Um, you could also uh, go to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and search the social handles for Mount Rushmore Podcast and be a part of the dialogue. You could suggest future episodes. You could tell us what we missed on previous episodes. We'd love to hear from you. Previous contributors have actually ended up being guests on our podcast, and they liked it, they told us. I don't know if they liked it. They were there. (laughs) They were there. Uh, So uh, supporting us is a great thing to do. Uh, Hey, make a New Year's resolution to support podcasts in general. That's right. And one of those suckers could be this one that we're playing a promo for right now. Hey everyone, David Wagner here, host of Addictions, the podcast about addictions. I wanted to let you all know about my weekly podcast, Addictions. Each week I bring you interviews with recovering addicts, information about topics related to addiction, and much, much more. You can find Addictions on Apple Podcasts and anywhere else you find podcasts. Just search for the word Addictions or visit addictionspodcast.wordpress.com. Again, that's addictionspodcast.wordpress.com. Thanks, and remember, never quit quitting. Oh, I love that podcast. 
Hey guys, remember that amazing thing that happened in the news? Oh, shocking! In 2019. Oh my God! Yeah, the right. one on New Year's Day. That one. Yeah, it was the New Year's Eve to New Year's Day, like stroke of midnight. Oh yeah, shockingness. Shockingness. I can't believe that that performance that happened on the the um, Ryan Seacrest, Ryan Seacrest, rocking New Year's rockin Eve, rocking New Year's, for, stomping on the grave of Dick Clark, <laughs> rocking New Year's Eve. Equally, <laughs> equally as shocking as Crazy. the other. Crazy, unpredictable. Thing thing. Yeah, I, I didn't think that popular entertainer would fall so low. As to do that, to have lost every one of your their Twitter followers, yeah, <laughs> for that one event was is outstanding, because people follow people on Twitter when they hate them, yeah, and to have had their Twitter count go down from eleven million four hundred thousand and twenty to zero was shocking. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So you, do you not like? They're just ambivalent about them now. They're just like I do not want this person in my life. I don't want him. I don't need him, or her, or her. I mean, or him. Yeah. Based on that outrageous thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Come for the uh, witty <laughs> conversation. Stay for the current Stay for the topics. ranking. Yeah, ranking. Okay, so uh, Michael is now... In, no, Richard's going to start with his third yeah. choice. Yeah, um, my... This is worth three points. Yeah, my third choice are the Greenland Vikings. Oh, Vikings are my third choice too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is well, this, that's okay. Is We're still the same thing. The, the podcast is still going. Yeah, because our first choice first is choice different. is different, and we've got a fourth. We got the big four pointer left to come. Yeah, for for all apparently you, for all you new listeners, if there are new listeners, uh, Richard and I have agreed that if we ever choose the same four, because we don't know what our choices are beforehand. That you know, be. you don't know each other. We don't know each other. No, I we rarely know rarely my own. Know our own. <laughs> if we ever have the same four choices, we're we have one more episode to record, then that's it. We're done. Yeah, pasta shapes. Pasta shapes. Pasta okay. shapes. Uh, I should also say that I have uh, invoked a new um, rule here. There's the Borglum bag, and I, I <laughs> want to know what you guys consider, because I could also say the Borglum bag preempts, preempts one of your choices. And if the Borglum bag wins the fourth, then I get four, four points. You're, Jeff, it's, you're the judge? I'm shitting on everything, aren't no, I? No, no, this is great. You're I, the judge? I hope that we have a new, <laughs> new um, set of rules every episode. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. Keeps us on our toes. We don't know what to expect. Next, if there is a tie, uh, you each extend your you extend your right arm. He mm-hmm. extends his left arm. I tie him together with a handkerchief. Then uh, your gang members have to watch as you have a dance fight. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do 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 do. Oh wait, I can't. It's I can't be, hum that. It's got to be. We don't sec- have clearance. Second wave ska. Second wave ska. <laughs> Just pogoing and kicking <laughs> each other. <laughs> Uh, your oh uh, the Vikings Green the Greenland Vikings yeah mine were the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> <laughs> from 1960 first played in the NFL in right the, in 1961 mm-hmm. um from Minnesota well they're out of the playoffs so that's sort of that's right that that's that's about as close as you can have to collapse the Vikings um no the Vikings from Greenland apparently Eric the Red according to the Icelandic sagas which we all studied in school I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, call, Eric the Red uh, colonized Greenland around 985 AD, um, right around the time he was banished from Iceland for manslaughter. Which that's, I, I got to think, if you're a Viking, I love the idea of like a Viking lawyer. Yeah, that, <laughs> that worked that that like bargained his way down from Viking murder to Viking manslaughter, and yeah. it's just like, Judge, he hacked the guy with an axe, but with the he was swinging back. I swing he didn't backwards. mean to hit him, but he was. Aiming for the guy in front of him, but he hit the the guy that he's on trial for in the back of the head. Yeah, not he killed him. He killed him. We all agree. It's manslaughter. Yeah. Send him out of the country. We don't need to chop his head off too. Yeah, and it th- the the settlement thrived for several hundred years. They got up to around five thousand people, and then when some Protestants came to convert them in seventeen twenty one, they arrived uh, from mainland Europe, and. They're all gone. <laughs> oh, wow. Which kind of makes con- conversion a little difficult. Mm-hmm. The Protestants are all gone or the Vikings? The are Vikings gone? are all gone. Mm. Kind of so hard they, to convert people if there's nobody there. So they showed up with a disease, a European disease or something. No, they weren't even there. I mean, they just, they, they showed up and went looking, knocking on doors and probably oh. for a while expected, thought that just maybe people were hiding from them. Wow. Until they realized, wait, it's not just people hiding from the uh, guys going door to door. There's really nobody here. So these are fearless marauders, this Viking clan. But what they fear more than anything is Protestants. It's like, no, we're, we're out of here. Yeah, those Lutherans? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. 
So they think that actually the settlements failed around 1400 AD. Um, possible that the Little Ice Age that happened around that time clogged up some of the seafaring routes so that trade was basically impossible. Richard's gesturing as if this is something he talks about and thinks about all the time. My 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 uh, my school's uh, mascot were the Vikings. The Greenland Vikings. They were over there. Were, well, it was Swedish Vikings. Minnesota okay. Vikings. <laughs> They're the Swedish Vikings, which didn't actually exist, which is its own little set of oh, weird okay. anachronism. Okay. But um, so they they somehow the Protestant uh, um, missionaries got some bad intel. They got some. Yeah, some okay. someone someone sold them a bun, bum steer, and they said, yeah. You can go convert those guys in Greenland. <laughs> I love Perfect. That. Look, stop knocking on my door. I know who you can convert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guys. You know that 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 really icy, big icy thing. Yeah, lots of people there. <laughs> Stanley, I can't believe you told him to go to Greenland. I can't believe they fell for it. <laughs> so there's possibly that uh, walrus. Uh, the walrus ivory trade collapsed, which was their main export at the oh. time. Um. And they don't really know what happened. Some people think that they just packed up and went back to Scandinavia. Hmm. Um, <laughs> some people think that they were ravaged by the Black Plague or possibly exterminated by the Inuits wow. who, had, who had moved to Greenland at, at around uh, 1280. What if they, they had, during an, a contentious election, all said, well... If Sven Trumpensky gets elected, right. we're all going to some move to somewhere else. We're all moving to back to Iceland. Back to Iceland. It's possible. And they did. And then and then Sven Trumpensky ran the uh, civilization into the into ground. The ground. He built a wall, an ice wall. An ice wall. Yeah. Okay, you were ca- talking about the speculations as to what had happened. So we're not really we're, we're not okay. really quite sure. In fact, there's some. Um, evidence that suggests that maybe the population wasn't quite as big as they thought that it was uh. ever. Um, so I think it's interesting that you can build a civilization and leave it with all of these qu- more question marks mm-hmm. than, than answers. Yeah. My, so my choice was like the Vikings in general, not the very specific Greenland Vikings, yeah. which um, what, what I read about was that uh, there was a lot of, you know, it's a very mobile culture. Of the Viking culture, very you know, they would uh, raid on their Viking ships, go out, mm-hmm. harvest, um, bring stuff back, and kind of do that again cy- cyclically for several yeah. hundred years, and then eventually they kind of just blended into society. They b- blended into the Protestantism and yeah. you know um, all the different uh, European cultures kind of absorbed them, and they didn't really have it seems like much of a specific home base Mm -hmm. the way that some cultures have, you know, um, the Mayans had what Chechen Itzen as kind of their center of, of power or, you know, Atlantis had whatever it was. Big castle city under the Uh waves. I don't know. Fake (laughs) ass shit. A, A lot of cultures, you know, have a center of power. I don't think the Vikings in general did. It was a more cultural thing. And eventually, you know, 1066, uh, the French invaded England, and that right around then, the you know everything kind of uh, melded together. Culture mm-hmm. started melding yeah. together, and I think that's ultimately what started to happen with the Vikings, whether it was in the northern part of Europe or as they kind of uh, were kind of gentrified or a little bit Mm -hmm. not gentrified but just kind of blended in with the rest of european culture yeah there's kind of just that specific sort of civilization just kind of faded Mm -hmm. away that i know where some of them are well at least i've seen one Mm -hmm. leading a boot camp thing in north hollywood park like the guy's tall he's got like a blonde beard like real thick calves like i think that's a viking for sure I i think that the viking culture too is interesting like the um the idea of the Atlantis one that there's so much myth that's built upon just like North mythology is like built into what the Vikings were, even though it's not historical. Mm -hmm. I think that there is so much, you know, it's not like they actually wore horned helmets yeah, and had this, this image that's been created and kind of diluted. It it wasn't like Hagar the horrible. Wasn't a historically accurate (laughs) cartoon. He wasn't that horrible. It was, well, he was horrible, but it was lawyered down from murderous. (laughs) Do you think, uh, Viking culture as we perceive it is a derivative of like, um, 
think of Hades, think of heaven, Atlantis, Valhalla, all these places kind of exist as these mythological places. Do you think some of them kind of even kind of influenced the idea? Uh, they went from being this mythological thing to a place that was real, or that in that people, well, after heaven, the invention of heaven, people are thinking that this was actually something that was up there in the clouds. And uh, do you think something like Atlantis was this, began its origin as something kind of like heaven, this I idea of this utopia that one could go to? I don't know. I don't know specifically about Atlantis. That seems, uh -huh. that seems to be more of like a fictionalized Narnia type. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, Lord of the Ringsy across the sea type place that you'll never get to. And even if you get there, it won't be there because yeah. it sunk beneath the waves. Yeah. I don't know if it really had much to do with a Valhalla sort of thing where mm -hmm. you're fighting for your afterlife and yeah. that if you've done good deeds or whatever, if you've been a true Norseman mm -hmm. or Viking or whatever, what whatever you believe in, that that will get you there. Yeah. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, 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 hey, hey. Hey guys, what's happening? How are you? How are you? Is this Zachary hey. Taylor or James hey. K. Polk? Which one is this? Hey, it's me, John Quincy Adams, sixth president. How are you doing? Hey, what's up, bro? How are you? <laughs> what's up, bro? Good to see you. How's it going, guys? You got a nice little podcast set up here. I didn't I like realize <laughs> John Quincy Adams was a Southie. I like it. How are you? How are you? Yeah, from Boston. Yeah, how are you? Uh, <laughs> Hey, I, I just wanted to reach in the Borglum bag and see what I could pull out here. Uh, so Richard, since you chose it, uh, I'm going to reach in the Borglum bag and see what the choice is. What do you see here, bro? I see uh, the mole people. The mole people. Tell me about them. What's been going on with the mole people? Huh? What do you know? Tell me, bro. Uh, this, may, this may be Michael's uh, realm of... Well, experience. Let's the mole see. people, what do you got for me, bro? I believe that in Fantastic Four number one, the mole man. The mole man, he comes up from the, through the street. He and they have to fight him. Yeah, they had to fight. Wrong mole people, bro. Okay, all right. In the 1820s, this guy named John Cleve Sims Jr., he was an American Army officer traveling around. He hooked me up, bro. He told me about the inside of the earth, which was a series of solid concentric spheres that were hollow. And he convinced me, after trying to convince Congress and all these other people, to make an expedition to the center of the earth to make some trades with the mole people. And this is legit, bro. This is legit. This is, I'm coming from a, a yeah. point of ignorance. Do the mole people, are they friends with the lizard people that live in the center of the earth too? We don't know how they party or who to hang with because uh -huh. we never got to meet them. Okay. But this guy, he says he knew about them. And so I said, hey, let me give you money, bro. I'm like the president or something, okay? So we're going to go down. We're going to meet these mole people. We're going to have like a whole EDM kind of thing going on down there. And we're going to trade with these bros, okay? We're going to bring furs. We're going to bring hats. We're going to bring fabric. We could bring like some whiskey. And Oh, mole people love whiskey. The mole people, who knows? You know, I think they got a party and stuff like that. So, uh, uh. You know, the bad news was that I died before we could ever meet him. Yeah. But the good news is, is <laughs> you got to top the mole people in well, order. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's going to be pretty tough, bro. <laughs> this was a civilization that I wholeheartedly <laughs> believed exists. But I got to. OK, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go just kind of go down to the Starbucks down the street and get on Google Earth. OK, OK. I'm going to check him out. I'll see if I can find the mole people. See you later, Quince. Later, bro. What's up, Q? See you in the, I'm number six out. Oh, hey, guys. Hey, yeah. where'd you go, Jeff? Oh, I just went inside for a glass of water. I have this new thing called a Brita filter. Mm. And it really makes like you put in this pitcher of water uh -huh. and you leave it there for four years and you never change it. Mm -hmm. And the water pretty much tastes the same as tap water. But you've got you have to pour the water in there, wait for it to filter through. Uh -huh. So if you want to drink a water you have to wait 25 minutes is it colder than regular water no it's not it's not colder mm. and i don't i i've tasted the regular water i think it tastes about the same uh but it's but it's something i get to but if you go to bed bath and beyond 20 percent off with a coupon oh yeah it's pretty good why what, what have you been up to what's happening just you know hanging out with the uh, the q the q yeah quincy jones not close Quin oh. real, cl real close okay <laughs> no quincy 
<laughs> What's this piece of paper? Oh, the Borglum bag. It's Says open. The mole people. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, what do you got? Michael. Michael. Um, an episode of Futurama called... Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I got this wrong. In ancient times. Okay, that's enough. Just of move on. <laughs> Uh, an episode of Futurama called Godfellas Ooh. Uh, from 2002 where um, Bender is on the Planet Express ship and somehow he gets fired off of the ship faster than the speed of light or at least slightly faster than their tra- – he gets fired off of the ship while they're traveling with speed of light so they can never catch up to him. Oh. In his space travels, a meteorite um, hits him on the ass. Because where else is a meteorite going to happen? <laughs> and it starts to develop life. It starts to grow on Bender. Oh. Uh, they're called the Shrimpkins. <laughs> and um, a whole civilization develops as Bender as their, like, god king. Mm-hmm. And he starts giving them orders on how to... Um, uh, I believe his two orders were, uh, let's see, uh, the one commandment, God needs booze. That's a good one. That's it. Boo. So their entire oh wait wait <laughs> not that kind of booze. So their entire civilization is built around uh, bringing him booze. Uh, eventually, uh, some of these shrimpkins stop believing in Bender because he's not doing anything to help them. Oh, and they move um, to another part of his body. So they're like these little atheist type creatures. And so uh, the people that believe in him, they enact this war. Uh, and Bender won't help them out. Um, or he tries to help out and kills them. Oh, well. Yeah, it's a bummer. Uh, and eventually a nuclear war started and everyone's wiped out. I love it. I do too. Is this is all in a half an hour with commercials. Yeah, like 22 minutes. Yeah. And it's kind of like the main plot and there's uh, a subplot and eventually he meets God or whatever. But I love, well, I love Futurama just in general. But I love that uh, there, all of these civilizations ultimately have some sort of deity yeah. that's involved. Yeah, whether it's the Vikings or certainly the Greeks mm-hmm. in Atlantis and the Mayans, um, and sometimes the god is a wrathful, yeah, asshole, and his involvement or lack thereof can explain to them at the time why their civilization failed, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of these things like uh, famine and drought and environmental changes are often like rap, you know often wrapped up as like oh well that was god's doing yeah the, the flood we, yeah. we sinned so the flood came yeah uh it was all of our doings because of god or the gods were mm-hmm. angry at mm-hmm. us and sometimes it's just a robot floating through space <laughs> yeah asshole. yeah right that's best i think humans as story creating creating machines have this desire to you look in the sky you don't see a bunch of stars you see these figures you see a bear you see a hunter you see a big picture, a little picture. And I think even in finding reasons to justify these, these acts of nature and things like that, it's, it just does not sit well with us. We need to have some story. It can't just yeah. be uh, a lot of times. It can't just be our fault. It's yeah. like, Oh, well God did it. Yeah. I, oh, well, I might've okay. did something that made God angry, but yeah, it was God. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and it couldn't have, Maybe it wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was somebody else that did something that made God angry. I'm off the hook. I'm off the hook. Should have yeah. had that sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think it probably is. Like, There's definitely, with if you asked within that culture, to say, well, who's God angry at? Oh, is he angry at us? Well, who should, he, should he be angry at you? No. He should be angry at Cassius Aurelius over here. He's <laughs> the one who really screwed up. Well, it's fascinating. Know. A lot of these civilizations are also, like we talk about them being failures and i think some of them just kind of die out some mm-hmm. of them, some of them just kind of have lived you know it's funny i thought of like the like the mesopotamians and they lived for like 3500 years 5000 wow. years and it's like can you really call them failed yeah they did a pretty good job pretty good pretty I good had this run. discussion with, with with sarah about this whether or not like the roman empire that's not a failure it just eventually died out yeah but it got subsumed into other it got split in two the yeah. Roman Empire just got the Eastern and the Western, and then... The Eastern lived on for a long time after the Western Yeah, they Empire did okay. Mm-hmm. They did all right for themselves. They, yeah. they, they were their own thing. Hey, a few years ago, the... Uh, Are yeah. you saying uh, here in the United States, we've had a pretty good run? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's actually the opposite. 
We are babies. We're babies, yeah. Yeah. That think we're babies that have the the luxury of information and the internet. Yeah. So we think that we're doing great, but we're nothing no. compared to how long some of these other civilizations have lasted. Yeah. They'd laugh at us. All right, Richard. Rep, rep, rep so um, I'm kind of going off that a little bit. Uh, my last one is the end of res- Western civilization as seen in the Terminator. Oh, wow. And I mean, look, it's not like we can't see this coming. I mean, it's literally we can see this coming yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, the the whole idea of Domino's pizza ordering system where you order the pizza and you see the appending pizza come to you. I mean, that's that's Skynet come to life. Skynet come to life. If, 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 if you can't see the connection between yeah. Domino's pizza ordering and, and, <laughs> the, the, end of, <laughs> and the end of Western <laughs> civilization as we know it, then I don't I don't know who you are. Yeah, if there, if there's a six foot two, two hundred and fifty two pound guy delivering your pizza with an Austrian <laughs> accent, just be like, "Well, tip him well, one, and then change, move your move." Change I your forgot car. your two liter. It's in the car. I'll be right back. <laughs> Did you want peppers? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, computer AI and robots—they're getting more sophisticated and more autonomous every day. Yeah. Well, we are. We're getting closer to Skynet, you guys. I mean, the mm-hmm. robot war is going to happen, and I. Brothers and sisters, we're on the short end yeah. of the stick of this. Is one. this going to be that DARPA dog thing that kind of just trots over to us and then falls over, or is this the Asimo robot that looks like he pooped his pants? Is this are these the robots <laughs> that they're talking about, or are they a dancing AOB robot? What what robots are coming at us? Um, I think it's I think it starts with the Amazon, the Siri, the Alexa, all these robots that we've decided to bring into our homes that are listening to every word. Yeah. And then eventually they're all going to just issue the command of like, kill, you know, kill yeah. all humans we'll at the all, same time. We'll, we'll be, they're nudging us into self-driving cars, which they'll control and just send off, off us into a nearby power station. Right. Okay. Or, or the fact that even you call your bank and your bank, chances are you're talking to an AI system yeah. that is designed to learn every time that someone calls and get a little bit smarter about what everyone is asking about and eventually be able to answer all of these questions by themselves. So we're giving them access to our complete financial system yeah. to start off with yeah. autonomous cars. I mean, it's not going to be it, one thing. It won't be. It won't be robots. I don't think mm-hmm. it'll just be this hive mind AI that we've created that we've think is making our lives easier. Mm-hmm. But eventually, it will get as smart or smarter than us. Yeah, and they will start thinking on its own. I mean, that's you that's going to be, happen. Uh, I would. Think how easy it is to dominate us, not physically but psychologically. Like we, we're yeah, we're, telling, we're pretty weak. We're pretty weak. Like if if this robot just sent all its information to the crunch crunch scientists at Taco Bell or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they stop me every time I drive by the, the thing. So I'm pretty perceptible to any mixture of cheese, meat, and uh, sour cream. So you're suggesting that the seven layer burrito is is perhaps the first onslaught. I would say it's not bullets in the gun; it's guacamole. Ah, yeah, that in the shooting. guac gun. The guac gun. The guac gun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, yeah. it's Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator <laughs> robot. One arm he has this huge sour cream <laughs> gun; the other one's the guacamole, and just <laughs> destroying us. It's first, 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 what first, kind first. of sauce do you want? <laughs> Mild so, or fire? What do you? Uh, what? How? When do you think this is going to happen? Oh, I don't. I don't know. It could be. The thing is, like, computer learning is so ex- – it's, they learn so exponentially fast. Mm-hmm. You think about how sophisticated things are right now with AI, and we've just scratched the surface of it. And it's these, – these things have just started to learn how to, how to learn, basically. Yeah. So that's kind of, to me, is the scary part. I'd like to say, boy, this – we're not something we're going to have to worry about for thousands of years. But I don't know. Yeah. It, it could be – yeah, so what, a lot sooner than I than I hope. I'm trying to remember what the actual story is behind Terminator. The Skynet is like a defense system that eventually becomes self aware, right? So we, so the humans built a thing to prevent global thermonuclear war, or whatever. The Russians attacking, I assume back in, and it was originally in 1984. I assume right. it was something like that, and then all of a sudden the robot brain is like, uh. These humans stink, all of them. 
Yeah, so yeah. one one through one through four point two billion of them. I don't like them. Yeah, so we can do it better. The Ultron character in the yeah. Avengers films seems to identify humans as the virus that's, that's infecting that's with, the voice, the with the voice of Robert California. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it what was such a weird odd he also had a very disturbing uh, disturbing mouth too I felt <laughs> Ultron kind of looked like a sphincter <laughs> talking uh, do you which leads me to an observation of this uh, each of our choices is these are all cautionary tales not just because some of them exist as myths some of them have loose facts related to them so we can't really study them necessarily from a scientific standpoint each 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 one but we can examine them f- as to what we may benefit from the... Especially the mole people. The mole people. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you weren't here for that. What is this? I just saw the piece of you'll, paper there. You'll have to, when oh. I edit the episode. Okay. okay. You'll, you'll just come back and listen to I'll it, listen. You'll be, and you'll be... <laughs> you'll be amazed. It'll I'll be listen. as amazing as that thing that happened on New Year's it Eve was, slash it New was Year's Day. Oh, God. We're still dealing with that, ramifications of that. I find looking through the list that... It was strange that Rich and I both chose an island sort of nation as our first one. Mm -hmm. Then we had the same two and three picks. Then we had a robot involved in the fourth one. That may be as close as we've come to ending the podcast. Happy New Year. (laughs) What what a way to start. Sorry, guys. Way to start season four. Okay, so I'll jump into some judging. Uh, This has been a real fun uh, discussion, and I want to thank you guys for putting all the research into this uh, that you did. And I'm going to just kind of shoot from the hip here. I really... Like, Are you oh, shooting guacado- guacamole <laughs> from the hip? <laughs> Open your tortillas, gentlemen. <laughs> here it comes. Uh, I would like to pick the Easter Island heads as the f- number one and one point choice. And you know what? Um, you each get two points because I'm choosing Mayans. Okay. And then... Um, Mole people gets three points. I see it on this piece of paper. I don't know what it is, okay. but it's coming out of the Borglum bag. I'll have to look. I'll have to Google that up um, and see what the AI tells me. And then uh, since I've never seen that episode of uh, Futurama and I'm really interested in checking it out, uh, I'm going to go look up Shrimpkins and Godfellas episode of Futurama. So... Does that mean you're going to pick it, or does that mean you're just going to look it up? I'm going to pick it. Okay. I'm going to pick it. I'm going to pick it. Uh, so that that has been a very contentious, probably from a scoring standpoint, episode of the Mount Rushmore podcast, the topic being Richard's choice of failed civilizations. And we hope you continue this uh, great New Year's resolution that you, the listener, have chosen of listening to every episode of the Mount Rushmore podcast. I think that's a better resolution than losing weight or studying French or traveling to the Orient, which I think is a racist thing to say. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I think that, that Oriental are rugs, Jeff. Oh, sorry, dude. Um, People aren't rugs. Oh, no, no. I don't, don't think they are. <laughs> uh, they may be unflappable. They may though. lie. They may lie. Yeah. Like a rug. Okay, so uh, this has been the Mount Rushmore Podcast. I, as always, am Jeff. I'm Richard. I'm Michael.